ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Director EMC, Chad Sakach. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I uh, want to welcome my uh, co-presenters here and friends and colleagues, Scott Davis, Chief Data Center Architect at VMware, and uh, Ed Bunyan, who basically is the VP and CTO of the Server Access and Virtualization Business Unit. Great. So uh, first of all, it's, it's hard to see in the lights when that crazy rock music at the beginning, I feel like a rock star up here, which is strange and foreign. But show of hands, how many of you folks here are EMC customers? Great. How many of you are VMware customers? Great. How many of you are Cisco customers? So first of all, on behalf of all three of us, thank you very much. Um, you know, customers make the world go around for all three of our respective companies. But that show of hands also tells me that we're doing the right thing by being here together. Um, the virtualized data center OS uh, vision becomes a reality when all the vendors in the ecosystem are working together to support your environments. And we're going to be talking about that today. You guys have seen the disclaimer slide, uh, so I'm going to kind of uh, skip, skip the details. But it is worth saying that we're going to be showing you some stuff that is currently not shipping and, and our futures for uh, all of the companies. So um, just keep that in mind. So first thing to kind of think about, uh, you know, our kind of thinking on what's going to happen in the near future. I think these are three fundamental axioms. They're just true on their own grounds. You can't dispute them. The first one is Moore's Law. You know, quad cores are mainstream today. You can buy, uh, you know, Intel Q6600 for 200 bucks. And obviously you can buy these next generation Xeon processors that are now launched with six cores. But that means that eight core and 16 core and 32 core are around the corner. You know, that's 2009, 2010 planning thinking. The second thing is what I call VMware's law, which says that every workload that can be virtualized should and in fact will be virtualized, right? It's only a question of what's the right time and what's the right app and what schedule and, and, and uh, speed. And then EMC's law, which is that this information growth is just going to accelerate and accelerate and accelerate. And a weird statistic, there's currently 294 exabytes of data that's been created by people like us, right? Taking pictures, videotaping these sessions, blogging, all that sort of stuff. So that's, uh, you know, these three axioms lead to three corollaries that are also inescapable. So 20 to 1 is actually the metric of yesteryear. 40 to 1 is a more common metric. It's what EMC sees, inter sees internally for our own VMware deployment. But that's going to become 100 to 1 before you know it. And that means technologies like memory over subscription, which I like to call memory deduplication, which VMware offers today, becomes more and more important, right? Your density is going to go up. But it also leads to a challenge that we have today that is going to continue to grow and grow and grow, which is the process of getting the data in and out of the ESX server layer is going to get more and more difficult. So as vendors, we need to work together to develop technologies to help you customers today and tomorrow. The second thing is that we're starting to see this at a lot of our customers. Uh, they're starting to deploy tier one applications prolifically using VMware. Uh, they're moving to that next stage of adoption. And what that means is that what used to be a fantastic best practice, you know, I'll give you an example here. This book here, how many of you are Clarion customers? This book, you know, is the EMC Clarion Best Practices for VMware book, right? By the way, you can get them at the booth. There's one for Symmetrics and for Solaris as well. And we produce these on a regular basis. In fact, the authors are here, so if you want to talk to them, they're, they're going to be at the booth. But that's an ante, right? The, what customers really need now is they need solution best practices. In other words, how does Exchange 2007 in conjunction with SQL Server 2005 work on VMware on my Cisco EMC and VMware infrastructure, right? The next thing that is the corollary is we're just, you need to start thinking about end-to-end -end QoS. And you can see that in a lot of the SLA demonstrations you saw in Paul's, in Paul's session and in, and in uh, Stephen Herod's uh, session today, right? How do you maintain that QoS, not just for the CPU and memory stack, but for the I.O. stack, both in terms of throughput, not just from the ESX server's perspective, but all the way through the fabric, and then also on the storage side to deliver those IOPS on what's, in essence, a shared resource, right? And then more translates into more to back up, more to recover, more to store, protect, replicate. And we know that we need to work hard as a vendor to try to make storage more and more efficient. 
as well, working together to make our management frameworks integrate as much as we can. So what are we all doing around that, and what are we seeing our customers do? Today, I would be curious, this is how I see most of the customers that I talk to, they've got some server virtualization, starting some VDI, there's some tier one app holdouts, and they, their infrastructure looks something like this, right? Starting to look at geographic DR using Site Recovery Manager, probably in many cases for the first time with x86 kind of workloads. But really the N plus one generation, the next generation data center, which is really the VCD, you know, VDCOS vision, looks more like this. You've got universal server virtualization. You've got very broad VDI consumption using all the new tools that are available. That is going to require a unified fabric that has a different kind of I.O. profile and different sort of characteristics than what most customers are doing today. Um, and you'll also notice that if everything's virtualized, it's all going to be consolidated on some storage using multiple protocol types, both block and with NAS. But also, that's the beginning. The next thing is to take those resources. Currently, DRS has CPU and memory resource pools. What our vision is, is that we want to make the network and the storage elements also be resource pools and make them transparent, right, in the virtualized data center kind of context, which means that there needs to be cooperation between our frameworks as well, the management tools that we, that we all have to support you. And then the last, you know, couple of things is then that, that gives us the framework for geographic vMotion, which I think of it this way. Think of it as global data center optimization. There's a ton of different workloads that, you know, power costs may vary state by state and country by country, moment by moment in the future. Um, you know, and your workloads between your lines of business all vary, right? And the other variant of that that you've seen Paul talk about very clearly is the idea that those resource pools will move in and out of the cloud that you're building in the data center and the cloud that is outside your data center walls, breaking the barriers of the physical data center infrastructure you've got. Now, who can do this? In my opinion, the answer to that question is no one vendor. And I think any one vendor that claims that they can has a, a more grandiose view of themselves than, than technology realities would suggest otherwise. Really, it, the next transformation requires the, your trusted vendors to work together, right? Not in silos, but work across our company boundaries as real alliance partners. So what we're going to show you over the remainder of the uh, time that we've got here with you is what we're doing as three partners to support every part of this virtualization evolution for our customers. So let's start at the beginning with the question of simple all protocol storage at the lowest possible cost point, most efficient that you possibly can do to make your business flexible. So EMC is working with Cisco and with VMware on this, getting the data in and out of, the, out of your ESX cluster problem. And today we're shipping the technologies now that can enable you to do that, and we're going to show you some of that now. But there's also stuff coming in the near term that I'm going to show you. So for example, vStorage API integration um, and making the storage ultimately transparent. Uh, Ed is going to focus the discussion over what Cisco is doing in conjunction with both of us around unif unified I.O. fabrics, quality of service for both LAN and storage traffic on the same fabric. Um, and you guys saw some of the what's next, right? What's next is the V network and the Cisco, you know, V switch, the Nexus 1000 V, right? Um, then for tier one apps, I think some of the stuff that's the most potent and the most useful for our customers like you guys is what we're doing together around joint best practices for key applications. And we're going to share our findings, uh, what we're seeing in the customer's deployments, and where to get more information. And we're going to talk about what we're doing to try and make our frameworks work together. You know, moving from two-way API integration into n-way API integration. And then we're also going to talk about some of the stuff that's a little bit further out, that fall into the cloud and liberate stage, right? So vServices, vApps, what EMC and what Cisco are doing around VM-ready appliances, um, those sorts of things. So let me get started here a little bit on, this, on the simple, all-in-one, what do you need from a storage subsystem to support VMware? 